The biggest crash in history has already started. In fact, it started over 50 years ago. But back to that in a moment. Many people are saying that the biggest, if not one of the biggest crashes in history is coming. I believe it's already here. And if you haven't figured that out yet, you need to watch this video. So in the last three years, how much do you think your spending power, the actual value of your money has gone down? Like, how high do you think real inflation, actual inflation to you is? Because if you believe the 7 8%, that's still 24% erosion of the value of your money in three years since the lockdown. I don't believe 7 8%. I think it's much more. So when I say on my lives that since the lockdown 2020, which isn't even three years, when I say that the spending power and the value of your money has gone down by 30%, Many people say, no, Rob, it's even more than that. So how can you not think that the crash hasn't already started if the value of your spending power and your money has gone down by more than 30% in less than three years? So the crash has already started and you need to get ready, be realistic, Wake up to this fact and look at turning it into an opportunity, which I'll share with you at the end of this video. So this mini budget has fired off a huge amount of fear and panic, even in the Bank of England, even in the IMF, you know, the, the entities that are supposed to govern our money. So if, if the IMF and the Bank of England are riddled with fear and the pound is so weak so the UK is riddled with fear then how is it going to be for the ordinary person so I'm going to come back to the mini budget in a moment but in 1971 the dollar came off the gold standard and that started the devaluation of money so I would actually say that the biggest crash in history started 50 years ago when your money started to go down in value. Because this title that I put on the video, which many people cite, the crash. Well, what does the crash actually mean to you? Like, think about it. Is a crash to you what happens in, in the economy? Or is a crash to you what happens in your economy? Is a crash house prices, GDP of the total economy, or is a crash your spending power? Because I would argue this, for you personally, a crash is a reduction in spending power, a reduction in the value of your money and assets, and a boom is the increase in your spending power and the increase in your asset value. And right now, your spending power is as low as it's been since the Second World War. In fact, it's probably even lower than that now. So therefore, for you personally, relevant in your life, the crash isn't going to happen. It's already started. And it isn't a normal crash. It's one of the biggest in history. And I think you've got to wake up to this. Let's add to this. The really weak pound, which is putting pressure on interest rates. So if interest rates are high, then that attracts overseas investments because overseas money can get high interest on investing in the pound. If interest rates are really low, the pound is really weak, then we don't attract foreign investment. We don't attract foreign money that we need to borrow because we need to borrow 45 billion for the tax breaks. We need to borrow 60 billion in six months for the energy cap guarantee. So that's just 100 billion in the next few months that the UK needs to borrow. But there's no guarantee that the UK can get it because overseas money's got to think it's an attractive investment. 
And if the pound is really weak and interest rates are really low, then the pound is not a good investment. So that's forcing pressure on banging interest rates up. Now, what pisses me off, I'm going to go on a tangent here, but it's important. What pisses me off is the Bank of England in their ivory towers have criticised openly the UK government for putting pressure on the economy with this mini budget and these tax cuts. But the Bank of England, they determine the interest rates. They're supposed to be independently determining the interest rates. It's not supposed to be anything to do with the government anymore. It's the Bank of England. And the Bank of England have kept interest rates below 0.5% for 12 years. So inflation has been going up and 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 up. And the Bank of England have done nothing. And they have kept interest rates artificially low for 12 years. And they have allowed inflation to soar. And now the UK government actually do something good, which is give you some fucking tax relief. Finally, the UK government do something for the people, give you a bit of tax relief. And now all of a sudden, the Bank of England are blaming the government for anything that they didn't do for the last 12 years. The Bank of England control interest rates. And one of the ways to get inflation down, which, by the way, inflation is theft of your money. Like, make, burn this in your mind. Inflation is the theft of your money. It is the erosion and the devaluation of your money. And inflation has been going up and 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 up. And the government, sorry, the Bank of England just sit there and go, yeah, look, inflation going up, look, inflation going up, look, inflation going up for 12 years. Now, I understand that why interest rates needed to be low, needed to protect borrowers, but 12 years. So basically now our whole society has got so used to interest rates being so low, which is not normal, by the way. That as soon as they go up, there's going to be a massive shock. So another reason why the biggest crash in history has started and more is to come is because everyone is so used to really low mortgages and really low loans, artificially low, because the Bank of England have kept them artificially low. And now they're going to have to go up, which is normal. And yet they're blaming the mini budget. When they haven't put interest rates up for 12 years. And now interest rates are going to have to go up to 2, 3, 5, 6% or whatever. And that's going to feel like an interest rate soar, even though it's actually not that outrageous, but it's going to feel outrageous. And people who've been paying £200 a month on a mortgage are going to pay four, six, eight hundred pounds a month. Mortgages, in terms of what people have to pay, are going to double and triple really quick. And they're going to be fucked. Then there's all the quantitative easing that has just started. So the UK has just started printing a load of money. Now, I don't necessarily blame, when I say blame, um, I understand the benefits of printing more money to temporarily fuel an economy. But the problem is, it's long-term debt. So pump some money into the system, temporarily bump the economy up, but it becomes long-term debt because new money printed devalues relatively all money in the system. And this started since 1971. It's not Liz Truss's fault. It started in 1971. So Nixon, Nixon took gold, um, money off the gold standard. It became fiat currency. And since 1971, more than 50 years, money's been doing that. Money's been doing that. Money's been doing that. Now, it's funny. I've got a couple of comments on here saying, oh, isn't this just negativity? Rob Moore is the prophet of doom. Now, everything I've just told you is a stone cold fact. Stone cold fact, not a prophet of doom, not negativity. If you want to go and be happy, clappy, positive and go and meditate your way out. Oh, there's no crash in my world because I'm a positive thinker. There will be no recession in my life because I'm just going to meditate and manifest. Come on, get real. Now, by the way, I did say to you and I do this on every video. There is going to be solutions. I am. There is going to be opportunities and I am going to share them with you. So and actually, I'm supporting the UK government's mini budget. So, guys, you've got to get just because it's not what you want to hear. And just because it's not all happy, clappy upside doesn't mean it's negative and doesn't mean that I'm being a prophet of doom. I'm a prophet of reality. Am I lying that your um, living expenses have gone up? Am I lying that inflation is going up? Am I lying that interest rates are going up? Am I lying that the pound is really weak? 
Am I lying that your energy costs have soared? No, I'm not fucking lying. Exactly, David. I am telling it how it is. If you don't like life as it is, go and follow some fairies. Unfollow me and go and follow some hippies. Go and dance around a fire, hold hands, sing kumbaya and manifest happiness. Because <laughs> you've got to get fucking real. By the way, when you are real, then you know how you can leverage the system. So, for example, you can leverage high inflation. You can leverage high interest rates. How do you leverage high interest rates? Lend money. How do you leverage high inflation? Have good debt against assets. How do you leverage high inflation? Have assets that go up over and above inflation because inflation also pushes asset prices up as well as pushing the prices of your commodities and your subsistence and your living up. So there is an upside to every downside. There's an opportunity. And I keep sharing them, but people miss them because they don't fucking listen because they just want everything to be nice and positive and happy. They're sticking their head down, burying in the sand, their head down and their ass up. Okay, anyway, so what's going on? Money's gone down hard. Inflation is at least at least 12%, maybe 15% plus a year. In the last, not even three years, your money's gone down more than 30%. Pound is the weakest that it's ever been. Interest rates are going to have to be forced up. That's going to mean all the people who've borrowed money, you've got loans and mortgages, their loan repayments are going to double and triple, and it's going to be a nightmare for them. Inflation has not peaked because we're not supplying as much as we used to before the lockdown. Things are still costing a lot of money. We've got this energy blackmail issue going on. Um, there's so many factors, which means that inflation is still probably going to go up. Supply chains are not back to normal. Production is not back to normal. Employment is not back to normal. And now we've got the Bank of England and the IMF and the UK government and everyone just scrapping and blaming each other. More money is being printed than ever before in the last, what, three years? More than the history of the total sum of all currency, I believe, has been printed. So money is fucking worthless. Cash is trash. And this shit is real. Make no mistake, inflation is going to go up more. Make no mistake, interest rates are going to go up more. Make no mistake, they're going to print more money. Make no mistake, your money is going to go down and down and down in value. And it started in 1971. And then Brexit and COVID and lockdowns and pandemics and wars and mismanagement of governments and soaring cost of living crisis and energy blackmails. This all exacerbated it. Oh, big fucking shit storm. But are you ready for the solutions? When asset prices drop, yields go up. So when properties go down in price, returns on investment go up. And as asset prices drop, that's the time to buy assets. Some asset prices are really high because inflation has also pushed asset prices up. That's why the rich get richer. People say to me, oh, Rob, well, it's not fair. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer and the wealth and inequality is going up and up and up. Well, broke people have money a little bit, not much, but they have money. Broke people think that wealth is money. Rich people know that wealth is assets. Rich people have owned assets through these crazy three years and their assets have soared in value. Property double digit, digit growth every year. Gold has soared. Watches have soared. The stock market at times has soared. So the rich have got richer because they know that money is going down in value, but assets are going up. So they tra transfer money into assets. Now is the time to transfer money into assets because assets are going to drop and therefore you're going to buy them cheaper and there's going to be a higher return, a higher yield. The next thing is, unfortunately, many businesses are going to go under. They didn't get the support that the government should have given them. Their costs are going up way more than they can put their prices up. So businesses are go on, going to go under. Therefore, now is the perfect time to start a business. More millionaires are made in a recession than at any other time. Asset prices drop, you buy assets. Businesses struggle, you start a business. Unemployment goes up, therefore it's time to start hiring. The economy will shrink, therefore it's your time to grow. This shit is a great opportunity, but you must be realistic. So if you want to get low-priced assets... 
start a, a business in the best environment with the lowest amount of competition, even buy distressed businesses low and no money down. If you want to be able to scale up and even higher as employment uh, increases, if you want to have an aggression while there is a recession, the best way I believe to learn how to do this is to join Rob.team. Because the biggest crash in history has started and you can actually leverage it because more millionaires are made in recessions than at any other time. So Rob.team is my digital online platform to give you better financial education and knowledge. You could call it your online digital financial educator and partner. It has got courses and masterclasses going back years. In fact, I, I built the new version of Rob.team at the start of lockdown. And by the way, I used to charge many hundreds of pounds for the courses that are in Rob.team. I don't charge any money for any of the courses that are in Rob.team now. I just ask you for a tiny subscription, which works out at less than 20 pence a day. And so the reason I was why I, I wiped the price down to virtually nothing was to help people through this cost of living crisis, because I believe we've got a depression coming. But you could have aggression when there's a depression. So to join Rob.team and get all these masterclasses for less than the cost of 20 pence a day, no ongoing contract, cancel any time. Simply open up a new web page right now, do it now, and type in R-O-B dot T-E-A-M, Rob dot team. Go and join right now, learn to start and scale a business, make, manage and multiply money, build assets, create multiple streams of income, build digital assets quicker, easier and of, of lower or no cost. Learn how to beat the money system at its own game. Learn how to not just survive, but thrive through this cost of living crisis. Um, just type in R-O-B dot T-E-A-M, Rob dot team. No ongoing contract, cancel any time, less than 20 pence a day instead of paying the hundreds of dollars per course because I wanted to do my bit because I launched this at the start of lockdown. So just type R-O-B dot T-E-A-M. Now, Marcus said it's risky starting a new business. I would say it's much more risky not. If you don't risk anything, you risk everything. What's more risky? Trying your own business on a side hustle, being guided by Rob.team and all the masterclasses, or staying in a job, not getting a pay rise and seeing your money going down 10 to 15% every year. You tell me what's more risky. Being um, someone else having control of your life, the government or your employer, or you having control of your life. And you can start an information business turning information into income and content into cash flow for no money and five to 10 hours a week. In fact, there's a whole masterclass on building your own membership site. There's a whole masterclass on 21 ways to monetize your content on Rob.team for less than 20 pence a day. So type in R-O-B dot T-E-A-M. I'm getting loads of kind comments about Rob.team. So thank you very much, Steve. Steve said he's made more than 100 grand this year from Rob.team. Scott is joining now. So go and join now. Don't wait because it's never too late to start, but it's always too late to wait. So do it now because tomorrow never comes. Just type in R-O-B dot T-E-A-M. Gary Bryant says he's a proud member of Rob.team and it's so useful. <laughs> is it free if you don't drink coffee? Well, I've changed it, Mark. I used to say for the cost of a large cup of coffee per month, but now I'm saying for less than 20 pence a day because some people say I don't drink coffee. So there you go. I really do believe the biggest crash in history is not coming. I believe the biggest crash in history has started. I believe this could be the dawn of the new depression. But in any depression, more millionaires are made. More businesses are started that are successful. More opportunities are rife because the playing field has been completely wiped down and leveled. F fertile land, which has been completely plowed, ready to start planting the new seeds. But you must be realistic about what's going on in the world. So there is the. Um, oh, by the way, Mason has said, what can I do with a thousand pound to invest? So there's a how to invest series, Mason, in Rob.team. So in Rob.team, there's a nine module, 10 hour how to invest series where we teach you how to invest no money down. One grand, five grand, 10 grand, 20 grand, 25 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand, 200 grand, quarter of a mil, 500 grand, a mil. And there's it's nine modules and 10 hours and it's how to diversify, how to de-risk. There's about nine different asset classes. We talk about gold, precious metals, cryptos, stock market, watch, watches, classic cars, starting businesses, real estate, you name it. Okay, Ian's going to join Rob.team, but go and join right now. Don't wait for another event. Go and join. Exactly. Scott has said, 
couple of cans of Red Bull or a pint or two that you don't have per month. And basically, Rob.team becomes free. Big shout out to my friend Wildass, one of the best personal trainers in the business. Um, so look, there's great opportunity right now. I'll give you an example. In the gym business, his gyms are going to go under. Great opportunity to start a, a fitness business. In the training businesses, in the events businesses, events are really hard to do now because of the cost of hotels and the cost of AV and people not wanting to go out as much. So actually, I've seen many events businesses stop or go bust. And now that's a great opportunity to be an events business. Content into cash flow, information into income. So actually an amazing opportunity um, to start a business. So if you want to learn how to start a business and scale a business and turn a side hustle into a main income stream and make, manage and multiply money, get better financial education and knowledge, the stuff they didn't teach you in school um, that the system doesn't want you to know, go join Rob.team. It's it's virtually free. I mean, less than 20 pence a day. I couldn't charge any less. Um, and free advice is worth every penny. That's the problem. But when you pay, you pay attention. So that tiny amount will create accountability and commitment. And there's so many masterclasses on the mindset, skill set, strategies and tactics of money. So, yeah, if you just open up a new page on the Internet, type in R-O-B dot. T-E-A-M. Come and join the thousands of movers, shakers, change makers and entrepreneurs like you. An amazing community. You get to join a WhatsApp group with me. You get special offers and VIP upgraded tickets for free. You get the first access to many of our events. I've done the How to Increase Your Earning Power Masterclass. The How to Get Leads and Clients for Free Part 1 and Part 2 Masterclass. All of this is in Rob.team for less than 20 pence a day. No contract cancel any time. So just type R-O-B dot. T-E-A-M, into a new web page and do it now. I'm getting loads of comments about this over the shoulder, holster, back brace. This is actually a gun holster to shoot my trolls. <laughs> um, but make no, make no mistake about it. The biggest crash in history is not coming. I believe it started because your money has gone down more than 10% a year with inflation just since the start of the lockdown. We've got this shitstorm of events like... Massive inflation, now soaring interest rates, massive taxation, lockdowns, pandemics, vaccines, 